Today's Formula 2 international trophy race here at Silverstone is the 200th Formula 2 race since this tremendously successful series began way back in 1967. It's a series that's produced no less than 16 of today's Grand Prix drivers and amongst them are Nicky Lauda, Keke Rosberg, Nigel Mansell and of course Jonathan Palmer. The cars are two litres, 340 horsepower. They're good for some 160 miles an hour on the hangar straight here. And the grid is full of new cars and new drivers today. In pole and second fastest positions on the grid for the Marlborough Daily Express International Trophy Race are Roberto Moreno and Mike Packwell in the shatteringly fast Rort Hondas. Then in third and fourth position, second round the grid, Emanuele Pirro, the Italian driver in the march, and his teammate Thierry Tassin for Belgium. Philippe Streif is fifth fastest, and Christian Danner, the German, is sixth quickest. Because the two Rolt Hondas, driven by Roberto Moreno, his first Formula Two race, incidentally, after his long years of race experience, and Mike Thackwell, have got a tremendous power advantage over the BMW four-cylinder powered cars. There on the left, number two, Roberto Moreno, a brilliant pole position in a staggering time of 1 minute 14.8, a speed of some 141 miles an hour, compared with Brian Henton's lap record of 1 minute 19.1, 133.4 miles an hour. So it will be amazing if there isn't a new lap record and a new race record because the conditions are excellent. We had snow earlier today, but it's all blown away now. There's a very stiff breeze, but it's not slowing the cars at all. The sun is starting to brighten the circuit. The roads are absolutely dry and the lights are red. It's go! Blackwell weaves on the bit. Moreno slots as they go into Cox Corner into the second position behind his teammate Mike Blackwell. The other 21 starters get away well. It's a clean start. Nobody is left on the line, I am happy to say. They make their way from the first corner at Cox on their way down to Beckett's the right-hander, then into the sweeping left of Chapel Curve to go down the hangar straight and it's Philippe Strife in third position and an interesting fact about Strife as he comes down the hangar straight chasing the two Rolt Hondas is that he had a road crash on his way to the hotel the night before last he actually started this race with the imprint of the steering wheel of his car on his chest he hurt his left ankle quite badly and he's driving in some considerable pain and already out of the race is Pierre Chauvet the Austrian driver, and there behind him is Aldo Bertuzzi. So two cars off on lap one, Chauvet from Austria and Aldo Bertuzzi, the Italian. They are well down, of course. Meantime, the leaders are approaching Woodcote, the chicane on lap one, and it's Blackwell, Moreno, Strife. Then it's Tassa, then it's Joe Gardner, then it's Christian Danner, then it's Michel Ferte, and behind Michel Ferte is Didier Tays. And it's a terrific pace they're setting from the start. I've got my stopwatch running on Mike Thackwell to see whether we get a lap record on the second lap before the tyres are even well and truly warmed. And from the way he's going, I think we will. Now, Strife in the AGS is hanging on well to Roberto Moreno. And we should bear in mind that the two Rolf Honda drivers, Thackwell from New Zealand and Moreno from Brazil, a friend and compatriot of world champion Nelson Piquet, may well be driving a tactical race. Strife goes through in third position. Here is Thackwell leading in the V6 Rolf Honda, followed by Moreno. Moreno has had a lot of Formula Pacific, Formula 3, Formula Ford experience. There, going through in fourth position is Tassin, behind him is Joe Gartner, behind Joe Gartner in sixth position is Michel Ferte in the... and that's Guido Daco, and as you can see it is snowing on the far side of the course on lap two. That is Guido Daco's car. So three cars effectively out of the running already,
Deco off, Bertuzzi off on lap one, Chauvet off on lap one. Well, a tremendous start there by Philippe Strife, Murray. He's, he's hanging on to the, the Rolts, but unfortunately, I just saw a haze of smoke there going through Beckett's. It was a bit of a haze the lap before at Stowe, and there could already be a slight problem in the AGS, but he's made a tremendous start. He's probably running a slightly softer tyre than the Hondas, who run a bit more fuel, and uh, he really made a super start. I think his injured left foot probably came off the clutch nice and sharpish, but he's hanging on very well with the Hondas, but I'm worried about some problem with his engine. Well, there he is, number six, Philippe Strife, who comes from Grenoble, the 1981 Formula 3 champion of France, and a man who actually last year was Renault's official Grand Prix Formula 1 car tester. Coming up now, behind the two Rolf Hondas, who so dominated Formula 2 in 1983, and it's 1 minute 21.3 for the third lap, of Mike Thackwell in his distinctive red helmet with the T on it, Moreno second, Philippe Strife third, and those three are the only three cars effectively in the race at the moment, with Tassan fourth, Ferté fifth, Gartner sixth, then the rest of them piling through. There's one of the distinctive Minardis, and here are we are, back with the two leaders. We are on lap four. Rolf Bieland, the three times or many times world champion in the sidecar class, has gone into the pits to have a battery change, Rolf Bieland. So and that is the Leone, Lamberto Leone, spinning out in the brand new 1983 Minardi. He was in ninth position, and that needs to say that Chauvet, Bertuzzi, Daco and Leone are out of the race on lap five, out of 47, and as you can see for yourself, the race veteran, Lamberto Leone, because he's been in racing for nine years and raced a Chevron Ferrari in Formula 2 about four years ago, is out of the international trophy, but perfectly OK. And Philippe Strife is out. That is rotten luck. Tiff, you noticed earlier on that he was in trouble. Yes, I think I spoke too soon. I said the smoke had gone away and it looked like his problems are over. I think the smoke went away when the oil ran out and, and now we see the result. So that's very sad for Philippe. He's had a very rough week, what with his road accident and everything else. And that means to say that this car and this driver, Michel Ferté, number 17, the brother of Alain Ferté, who last year drove in Formula 2, but this year does not seem to be driving in anything. Last year, he won the Monaco Formula 3 race and uh, had a few Formula 2 drives as a result of it and has made his mark. He won the French Marlborough Challenge as long ago as 1981. He was second in the French Formula 3 Championship in 1982. Then he was Formula 3 champion last year. And after that win in Monaco, he was promoted to Formula 2 and he's showing that it's well worth it because here he is in third position, albeit a long way now, behind Mike Packwell, the leader, Roberto Moreno in second place, both of them in the Royal Tondas. In fourth position now, it's the Belgian, Thierry Tassin, in the Mike Earl Run Onyx March with the BMW engine. Well, it's going to be... A lovely bit of race viewing because you're seeing these two superbly set up Ron Torren and the Belgian with their V6 340 horsepower Honda engines showing the way to everybody else in this race. Not right up now, with and he's closing, he's going to try and take back one as they come into the chicane on lap 21. And as they come through, Moreno leads. Roberto Moreno is showing the way now. And another retirement with Moreno leading. Thackwell second out of the race now has gone. Beat Jantz. A terrific scrap at the front. And uh, we've heard time and time again that if you are in a team, the man you want to beat more than anybody else is your own teammate in order to show your dominance in that team. If that is so, Roberto Moreno is certainly showing his mark now. Admired as a driver by the late Colin Chapman of Lotus, but he gave 
Moreno a testing contract and it looks as though Thakwal is going to try and pay the Brazilian back as they come down into hangar. Is Moreno going to be able to close the door? No! New leader. First Thakwal led, then Moreno led, then Thakwal led and now Moreno does it back to the New Zealander on lap 23. And the times are tumbling. One minute, 16.7. That's nearly a full second off the previous lap record. One minute, 16.7 by Roberto Moreno. And that is a speed of 137.5 miles an hour. Backwell leads. Moreno second. In the march, Danner in the march. And Danner is the first man that they're going to attack very shortly now. Yes. Tall Christian Danner, there he is in the white March 842, the BS engineering car. That's Christian Danner, three years in the official Mark's Formula, March Formula 2 team, 83, 82 and 81. Out of it now, through the chicane, chased by the leaders. The ninth man is going to be caught shortly, number 66 that is. German Christian Danner from Munich, who wears glasses whilst he is actually racing. And he's going to be caught and passed, first of all, by Mike Thackwell, then by Roberto Moreno. And that is the very latest 1984 march, driven by one of the quickest Formula 2 drivers. And it has been lapped by the 1984 Rolf Honda in 25 laps in this 47 lap race. And, uh, Roberto Moreno's taken a little longer to get past Danner than Thackwell did, and that's given Mike Thackwell, the New Zealander, the chance to extend his lead a bit, but I suspect that Roberto Moreno will soon close up, and anyway, Mike Thackwell has got a problem now, and that's overtaking this lot in front of him. There's Piro. Piro is the target man now in eighth position, number four, Emanuele Piro in the red and white car, comes from Rome, Formula Abarth champion in 1980, and, the, and he has now been passed by Thackwell. Now, Thackwell's next target is Didier Tays in the, the, the 18, car 18, the red and white car, and he's slicing his way through the tail enders. Didier Tays is in seventh position, he moves over, he lets Thackwell through, but he takes the apex on the corner and closes the door on Roberto Moreno, who is now going through on the inside and taking Didier Tays, and in the process, closing up on Thackwell. The two leaders are absolutely together again on lap 27. In this 47th race, New Zealander leads Brazilian, Rotonda leads Rotonda. In third position is still Fete in the Martini. Fourth is Tassin. Now, there are the two Rotondas. They've got a head of Didier Tays, the Belgian. Now they've got a bit of a gap, and the next target is Pascal Fabre in the blue and white car, number 33, the Frenchman, who is in sixth position. And it's Joe Gardner their win now. I think everybody's Gardner. going with Moreno there, going round the outside of that well. They're about to go either side of Joe Gardner. Look at this as they come down to the chicane. Roberto Moreno sees his opportunity, passes his teammate Mike Thackwell, and Thackwell has repassed him, and they're closing up on Joe Gardner. A magnificent scrap between Mike Thackwell and Roberto Moreno. Moreno's back in the lead. He's got through on the inside at Cox. They're slicing their way through the field. Moreno leads, Thackwell second, Ferte third, Tassan fourth, and they have lapped up to the fourth place man now. There's Joe Gart, lapped up to the fifth place man, there is Gart. Well, what a serious pace to Well, yes, Joe Gart has been the man this the whole group's been trying to get past all this race, and even the leaders are having a hard time getting past Gartner. I think Moreno's going to do Gartner now coming down towards Stowe, but Gartner's going to lap a back marker himself, and that'll cause more problems for Mike Thackwell behind. And yes, there's Stefano Livio, I think one of the Mazzario cars, almost causing problems for the leaders. This is what you've got to watch out for. Yes, Livio, a comparatively inexperienced driver, second in the 1983 Italian Formula 3 Championship, 
very quick when he tested a Misano at uh, Misano for Mike Earls on its team this year, but uh, hasn't got the race experience of a lot of the other competitors in this race, and it showed there. But now, both Moreno and Thackwell are through. They approach the chicane again. And... Yes, Thackwell there, Murray still caught behind Joe Gart, yeah. and Joe Gart has been the man that's difficult to overtake. I saw there Thackwell nipping out to have a look, and now he's through. This is Roberto Moreno's opportunity. If he can capitalise on the fact that Joe Gartner was holding up his teammate, Mike Thackwell, he could break away. He's certainly broken the toe, of course. So I'll have to keep my eyes on. If that is so, that is very, very close to the pole time of uh, 1 minute 14.8. And Roberto Moreno is certainly putting in a very, very quick combination of laps as he passes laps Thierry Tassin and that out of the race is Joe Gartner the man who wittingly or unwittingly was holding people up and particularly Moreno and Thackwell but look at this the battle for the lead now now the, the boot is on the other foot because Moreno sees Thackwell come out large in his mirrors and go through on the inside. Mike Thackwell has fought back magnificently. He hasn't, I think, still completely recovered from that heel injury, which the after effects which, of which will probably be with him for the rest of his life. But it has not affected his driving one iota, and we have a new leader. This is the battle between Thierry Tassin, number three, in the red and white March 842, and Pascal Fabre, the Belgian and the Frenchman, both in the same type and make of car, and they are scrapping for fourth position behind Michel Ferté, the Martini, French driver, who is in third place behind, a lap behind, well over a lap behind, the battling Thackwell and Moreno, Yes, behind the battle for these between these two as they come up to lap Stefano Livio in the Mezzario car. There is Michel Ferte, lapped a long time ago in third position, Thierry Tassin in fourth position, Pascal Fabre in fifth position, Didier Thays in sixth place, and as far as cars are concerned, that means a Rolt Honda leads. A Rolt Honda is second, a Martini is third, a March 842 is fourth, another one is fifth, and in sixth place is Didier Thays, is Martini, and a challenge from Thackwell, and again he's done to Moreno as he's done at least three times before at uh, Club Corner. He's nipped through, and Moreno's retaken him. Well, this uh, my game of chess is getting a bit out of hand now, Murray. I watched the pit boards the lap before. They both just had L5, which means lap 5, and 17.5, which is their lap time. No orders, side by side. Down to the chicane, down to fourth gear, flick through it to start the last lap, and I'll give you the gap, because it looks to me as though it's a gap that you can now time on the stopwatch. And as Roberto Moreno goes across the line to start his last lap, he is leading by seven tenths of a second only. There's the gap visually. Into Cox. This is the 47th and last lap. Is Roberto Moreno going to win his first ever Formula Two race after showing so much prom promise in carts, in Formula Four, in Formula Three, in Formula Atlantic, in Formula Pacific, and now in Formula Two? We'll know the answer very shortly. Thackwell behind him second. This is the last lap, I say again, and we're coming up to the point where Thackwell has succeeded in taking Moreno times in the past, but I don't think he's close enough this time. He's not. Less than half a lap to go now. A famous, famous victory for Ron Toranac, for Rolt Honda, and for all the merry men who work for Ron Toranac, and they're going to be beside themselves with pleasure at their cars finishing first and second which they are bound to do, unless there's a mistake by either of these drivers. And Moreno is coming up to the chicane for the 47th and last time, and Thackwell is making...
making his efforts and he closes right up and he goes through and he leads. Oh. Fantastic! Oh. And Marino is off, off, off! And Thakwa wins, he slows right down. He's waiting for Moreno to come through. And it will be a livid Brazilian who is sitting there now. He can't restart his engine. So as a distraughter, no doubt furious, Roberto Moreno sits there in his silent and static Ross Honda, desperately trying to start his engine. Within sight of the chequered flag, he at least has the consolation, if he can think about it, that he must finish second because the chequered flag is out and no one can go as far as he has already gone. And he's got it going, he's got it going. Well, after a nail-biting finish, Mike Thackwell wins for Rolt Honda from his teammate Roberto Moreno in third place in the Martini, Michel Ferti.